All right. Good morning, everyone. You can please put yourself to the list of attendees. Hello. Hey, good morning. Good evening, everyone. Good morning. Hey, you know what time it is. What time is it? Eight AM where I'm at. <laughs> Adele, uh, Adele, you wanna uh, be a scribe for today's meetings, or yeah, I can I can scribe, or somebody else can volunteer. Uh, some... I'll I'll scribe. It's fine. Scribers are good. The more scribers, the the better the notes. Oh, we can have more than one. Yeah. Add yourself also if you wanna if you wanna take some notes. I think we can get started. Uh, yeah, thanks everyone for joining. I think I didn't. I, I didn't join the last meeting, but you know, happy to join this one. Um, so we have a a little bit of a new structure here. So um, you know, we have reports, new business, old business, and then so we just we'll go down the list. Uh, so in terms of. Um, so I have my name here. So in terms of uh, any cognitive AI working group leads uh, updates, uh, I think we've been meeting uh, a couple of times, or we met a couple of times uh, to discuss uh, how we can give a little bit more structure to the working group. Uh, uh, there are a lot of different initiatives. Uh, uh, so we have a scheduling white paper, we have um, uh, a project to summarize the the videos uh, and then uh, other things related to tag environmental sustainability and so we will we'll want to kind of like uh, maybe set up a different uh, working tracks uh, so the one of the issues is that we uh, we can meet uh, all together in this group and, and that's fine but uh, uh, once we start uh, going into all these different tracks, it becomes kind of challenging to um, have everybody together contribute to uh, to everything, right? So, um, and, and I would imagine that there's also like a special interest uh, for certain people, and we would like to give that opportunity for those folks to to uh, address those those things that they're 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 more interested in. And that yeah, that's pretty much all the updates. Uh, uh, any up updates from Adele and in, in, uh, Ron? Uh, I can. Um, uh, it's listed down there under old old uh, business. Okay. I'll talk. Well, I'll wait till then. I'll talk more about the scheduling paper uh, there. Um, but yeah, to to these things, there's a couple of um, maybe I'll just throw out there. Like we've looked into doing a survey our surveys, uh, of which I <laughs> horribly flopped, uh, on, on getting that done in a timely, uh, way. Um, but the good news is, uh, the CNCF has a, I'm not sure if it's just as a general thing coming out of the main, I don't know what we want to call it, the main office, uh, not any particular TOC looks, looks to me like they are doing some surveys, uh, including, um, uh, work or, you know, what's going on in the AI space. So don't have a ton of details, but I had talked to our 
fearless CTO about this briefly. And it uh, looks like that's something that's happening somewhere. So we, uh, I do need to follow up, see what's going on there. Maybe we could use some of that information uh, if it's happened. Um, nonetheless, we should probably still prepare to do um, surveys around our kind of neck of, neck of the woods, but um, didn't want to duplicate what they were doing or steal their thunder uh, either. So uh, anyway, uh, that's on me. I will get uh, an update on that. Uh, cool, cool. Uh, so any any uh, questions about uh, some of this, uh, yeah. these things that, that we, we talked about? So I, I just want to add a couple of things. So for 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 the topics that we're discussing, so I'll give you an example. So recently, previously we did, uh, uh, we had this, I'm trying to find the link, the strategy and deliverables and, and activities. So this group, you know, and I sent the link in the chat, this group will be doing and is doing a lot of things, including community outreach, uh, documentation, content production, projects and initiatives. I think Ron, uh, and Ricardo touched on the projects and initiatives, the things that we're doing, but also there are other things. Um, like if you go up a bit um, in the in the mind map, um, uh, Ricardo. Yeah. So I think yeah, dividing ourselves into groups and uh, and and figuring out how to approach each of these activities in yeah. in the group. Um, yeah. Is on the... Yeah. I think. Uh, yeah so it, around the process like how do we for example like, so we agreed to do something around writing uh how do we how do we publish something uh what do we need to be doing and this is something that we've for example raised to the TUC, like, okay, what is the actual official process of publishing a white paper, right? You know, is it just a service ticket? Is it more? So more around process and how do we structure the activities in the group in a way that makes sense to everyone who wishes to contribute? Um, but yeah, I guess the, just just to add on the projects and initiatives that are ongoing that we will cover. Um, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, thanks. Uh... Uh, before we move on, any other questions, concerns from anybody else on the call? Just want to give an opportunity for everyone to raise concerns or or, or provide any feedback. So, are any of the white papers uh, that are currently in uh, th that we discussed are are they pretty much complete at this point, and you're just looking for publishing, or are you looking for additional content or, or review like what, what's i'm trying to find ways to to effectively jump in and perhaps help in some of these areas maybe ricardo we can go over the dashboard and then show which active items we have uh and then highlight which stages are these things are mm -hmm. i can share the link to the yeah, and the projects. Okay, this one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, no, I was I was going to say so we let let's focus on the progress. So we just to 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 answer your question, Frederick. We had one big white paper published. That's the CNAI white paper, and then ongoing. There is one, I think it's in the final stages, that's the scheduling. And then recently, we're, we're trying to collaborate on the, uh, yeah, sorry, my phone rang. And um, we're trying to collaborate on the sustainability white paper. So these are the active white paper efforts. And you can see here in progress, there will, you know, if you look at 168, uh, reference architecture and best practices, I'll cover that. Uh, I, have a, I have an agenda item for this. And, uh, in this meeting. And then the other one is the scheduling pre AI workloads. Um, the links and everything related to these activities and write-ups. Um, so I, I've, as I mentioned, we have multiple activities. One of them is um, is writing. The other is projects and, and, and coding and, and so on. For the writing piece, yeah, yeah this is, yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll find the scheduling and the, and the sustainability as active things in progress. 
um, yeah, and this different... actually this actually became a white paper rather than just a write up, right? Yeah, a, a, so a write up because we didn't know, and I think even until recently we were not hundred percent sure it's going to be a white paper, but the consensus has been that it will be a white paper. Um, and so once this is done, uh, uh, which is in the final stages, it will be it should be a white paper subject to the release and publishing process that we're trying to discuss, as mentioned, as part of the uh, LEADS meeting. Uh, Did that answer your question, Frederick? Um, yeah, that does. Thank you very much. And, and also, Frederick, just to throw it out there, we, we, we are still improving our dashboard uh, <laughs> management skills. Um, in fact, uh, you know, if, if you want to uh, hit refresh on the dashboard, I just changed the name of the the white paper for scheduling, so it's more humane. And and yeah. the, I have access finally. I and I could fully appreciate the, the challenges here as well because like uh, I do a lot of stuff in the tag uh, security and try to keep track of all of the different threads is uh, is always a challenge even with mature processes. Uh, so I did definitely appreciate the the work that's gone into this. And the stuff in the backlog, if you if you want to move them, <laughs> also open to moving. Uh, I think they're waiting for people who want to pick them up and take them to ready or in progress or, uh, yeah. So this yeah, is the, the, the good. Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, no, 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 go ahead, go ahead, Ricardo. Oh, uh, I was going to say that we have these items in the backlog, but um, if somebody also has something that they want to work on, you know, you, you know, add it, you know, as a different item right here, right? So, I mean, there, I mean, we don't want to prevent people from actually um, wanting to do something and 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 actually go ahead and going ahead and 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 doing it. One one thing that we talked about in in the beginning of this meeting is that you know we have to keep in mind that some of these things that somebody wants to do, not necessarily everybody will have to join or, or will have to join the, that effort. And so you can gather around a set of people who are interested in that specific item and they can go ahead and work on that item, right? And and maybe we can uh, talk about it in, in these meetings afterwards and, and talk about progress. Yeah, and, and my my interest in this scenario just just to make it uh just to make it really clear is uh, i do a lot of stuff in the security space and ai security is one area i spend a lot of time on um, i'm writing an ANSI standard with another with another organization working with uh with some of the other linux foundations like fitnos and open and ossf and i think we have a strong place to play here considering the uh the adoption of ai uh, workloads within kubernetes yeah. and so yeah, um, there's a lot of thought I put into that, and I would love to use this as a possible forum to to get some of that out. But I I don't want to take over the meeting in this particular scenario on that specific topic. Uh, just that's my that that, that that's going to be my interest in moving forward if if possible. Well, uh, on that point, uh, Ricardo, just to to do it, let's put a placeholder there for security paper, and we can. Prove the point, and the, and 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 also uh, Frederick, just so we can have your contact information in there, so we can actually respond to you <laughs> and work with you. Um, sure. might, might be um, a good thing. <laughs> I'll, I'll put my GitHub uh, ID down, um, and I, my my name is in the uh, is in the meeting notes as well. Okay, just give me a moment. Very good. It, that is the other issue that we have to solve, Ricardo. Where like we're able to assign people who are not have not added a comment to this repo elsewhere. Um, there's there's no way to do the, we'll, we'll take a look at it after the meeting, right? But yeah, okay. I'll just have a place, placeholder there. And then usually what, what we have done is, is we create an issue and add a label CNAI, then it would it magically appear also in, the, uh, or you, you can add it to the, the dashboard. All right, cool. I, I think we can move on, right? So the we we'll spend about fifty minutes on this. So, uh, Adol, you have any updates on any of these projects? 
Uh, so I, I guess that for the sustainability, let's keep me in the new business uh, part. And I guess for the other ones, uh, maybe you, Ronald, the, you want to give an update on, on the scheduling? Because uh, if we go back to the dashboard, because um, that's, that's be, yeah, the, the first one is scheduling. Do you want to give an update on this one? Yeah. Um, okay, so so I'll just stick to, to brass tacks here. Um, so we are moving, uh, we're going to reopen the original document um, to, to editing, commenting, things like that. Um, there has been work done to another document that's going to get ported back into to this. Uh, but don't let that stop uh, anyone from looking and, and doing what, what you like to do. I think we have to maybe change, we still have to change the permissions to, to reopen it to everybody. But um, the, just to give you an idea of, the, of what's going on, um, the, the, we started the reflow of it, ba basically meaning for those who are new to this, uh, basically we had lots of authors, uh, for a long period of time. And as you could guess, it becomes a bit of a, you know, mashup of, of things. And so the idea with the reflow is to kind of have a, a single person kind of go through and clean, clean it up basically. So it's more coherent and, and things like that, find the gaps, right. Those kinds of things. And then reopen it, right? So we can then continue, right? So it's a little more focused. Um, so we started that, but a uh, cu couple of things is, uh, I did start mainly on the intro, uh, kind of clarifying things, but the reality, as far as I could see it, is um, still need to come up with some compelling visual, um, tiny, like, you know, pseudo code examples of what we're talking about. Um, because unless you already know this stuff it's kind of a chicken and the egg so so trying to um uh work on that that's really so ba basically doing things uh kind of offline trying to figure out what a tiny super tiny demo would be right the paper's already like 40 pages right it's already too long so we we um uh because we can't dive into particular topics too deep here or else it's going to become a book um what i've just what, what i say i but what we've kind of decided is to uh, you know, simplify things a little bit and then improve kind of the, the guide aspect of it. Like, here's a little bit of the conceptual, what we're talking about. So how do you visualize that kind of thing? So that's, what's going on. So, uh, we're going to, uh, reopen it, uh, to others, um, now. And then, uh, again, as you, you know, please feel free to, to read it, uh, comment, uh, away on it and, uh, we'll, we'll keep banging away at it. So that's, that's kind of where we're at. Ron, do you want to open this for as an editor or, or um, commenter? I'd say commenter for now, okay. uh, because just because of the reflow or else it's, I mean, that's kind of the, the crux of the original problem, right? Too many, as soon as one line moves, everything moves, right? And then it's like, oh my gosh, what, what happened? Sounds good. Okay. Any questions about that? About the white yeah, paper we... reflow and... I have a comment more than a question. So, can, can, but since we're opening it back, can we at least like um, approve the changes that because it's very very crowded. So, yep, if you that's, that, that's... where all those changes made up, so it's kind of a mess. So we can, I think, we can do that at this point. At yeah, this... that was done in the other doc. That's what oh, I was saying. Okay. It's, it's going to get ported into this one. Okay. I, just, oh, okay. I just need to do it. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I missed that. But we agree, yes. <laughs> Spirit animal of writing, <laughs> agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we have to wrap this up at some point, so that's good. Yeah. All right. Comments, questions? Other folks on the call? Okay. Uh, maybe so. Do, or uh, do we want to cover the other two projects happening? Uh, so the I don't think there is. There would be the summarizer and the and uh, well, the runtime proposal is ongoing. Uh, in in the dashboard, if you look at it, uh, there's a in progress. There's a runtime proposal. So the paper is still ongoing, getting active. Um, and then the summarizer, I have not heard an update about the summarizer uh, for a while. So we'll need probably to see where this is at. 
I don't know if any of the folks building the summarizer, I, I joined some of the meetings earlier. I wasn't able to join. I don't think there were meetings in the past months. Um, uh, so we would, yeah, we probably want to revisit and see what's up uh, with the summarizer. And if, if it's stuck at some point, um, we would need to see where we want to take it. Is it anybody on the call working on the summarizer? Uh, I, mean... I don't see the Wamin or, or the other folks. Uh, Claudia, do you know something? <laughs> Uh, no, not really. I couldn't join the call yesterday. I had a conflict, so I don't, I don't know okay. what happened. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll, okay. we'll think up offline. And... Is there a link uh, to yesterday's meeting? I mean, maybe we could drop that in there if, if there is. I, I, <laughs> I didn't even know there was a meeting. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I only had the, uh, you know, the invite on the calendar. I don't think I've seen any Slack happening about that. Yeah, we can think of uh, offline basically. Yeah. Okay. Um. And then and then so this what is it? Uh, Adele, you know what this is? Yeah, uh, yeah. This is um. So someone earlier started the discussion around uh, an LLM gateway. Uh. And basically, there there there's a lot of folks in the community interested in something like that, and so uh, I suggested to to move this discussion, and also Yuan from KSERV suggested we move it to the serving group. So the discussions are mainly in serving because I think it's mostly related to serving then um, at least the, the scope then then, uh, then just a generic AI topic. The specific topic for it would be around serving and mainly how do we so far and where it is, is how do we extend existing tooling? Like for example, the uh, Istio and Envoy gateways and add more CRs to, describe which models in the back end to route to and how to introduce service discovery. So reusing the existing knowledge and, and wisdom of the cloud native space to provide a solution to serving models and providing and, and gate gatekeeping the requests to serve um, to serve different use cases. So working on a gateway with a cloud native LLM, well, with a LLM serving focus is where, is what this is about. Um, and the, the related doc is, is linked in the issue. Um, yeah, and there's more description in there of what's going on. Um, so folks from here, feel free to jump in there, um, and maybe bring back some of the discussions. Um, yeah and see where we can uh, What is their with. Uh, intent with, the, with this working group uh, to evangelize? Uh, the, I the think at the, so far this has been, the discussion is uh, initially it started with let's build a gateway, but then it evolved to, well, there exists a bunch of tools out there that could serve us. Maybe we could reuse some of those. And so this is more evolving as a, um, a blueprint of how to build or cloud native LLM gateway. And if need be, let's build a new component that does or add a new API that covers whatever was not covered as part of the scope of building a gateway for LLMs. Sounds good. Yeah, it sounds like a reference architecture for this. So, and... More or less so Ooh. far, um, but it could also be the birth. It could also have, give birth to new projects uh, in the space. I can add to this if you want, Ricardo. Like I know that Dan actually collaborating with Envoy folks, uh, to see how they can reuse the existing functionalities from their site. Yeah, among others, right? So Envoy is, is, yeah. is one. Um, um, there is Light LLM as a solution uh, that it was mentioned initially, but it's not cloud native. Um, and so the the question is, how do we map what exists in in this space to what we know how to do um, for a med deployment perspective and the cloud native perspective and give a solution that, for example, would work nicely on Kubernetes, that would work nicely in, on cloud native and so on. Mm -hmm. Sounds exciting to me. Any any other uh, comments about it, about this uh, 
proposal. Nope, but I like it. It's a good one. Yeah. Uh, the last one is this one. Yeah, let's let's cover that, and that also removes an item from an agenda. Uh, so uh, this is ongoing. So uh, we've invited. So we think the last meeting we've invited Marlo from uh, uh, or tagged Marlo from Tag Environment Sustainability, and she invited us to join Tag Environment Sustainability meeting to introduce the efforts. So this effort is, um, uh, you know, some folks from Red Hat were brainstorming around. Uh, uh, how do we build uh, sustainable AI systems and, and cloud native? Just give me a second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I, 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 I. Give me a minute. Yeah. Mini interruption. Is there? Always a welcome intrusion now. Yeah. So I, I can add one comment here while while the, the leader is, is keeping Adele busy. Um the, I did not know this, maybe others did. There's a there's a tag ref for reference architectures. I, I did not that was news to me uh this week. Uh is anybody involved with that? There's a tag for reference architectures, or or you mean yeah, like, or like a working group or something? Yeah, Karena mentioned that, so I I haven't had time to to verify, but uh, uh, if I heard her correctly, it sounds like there's a tag for reference architectures. Um, so something to maybe I relate to this eventually. I don't know if it's a tag specifically because I think there's like five or six tags. Um, yeah, it could be. Some initiative or working group, maybe. Yeah, that's Although why it threw me off a little. I didn't yeah. think. Yeah, um, yeah, it might be good to find out what it is, and and maybe we can collaborate with uh, them, right? So we can avoid a uh, duplication. So I'm back. Um, it, so it, it was started as a brainstorming discussion around uh, sustainable AI. How do we do that? So Vincent also from a lead of the Green Software Foundation um, and uh, Juan, one of the uh, chairs of Kiplo and, and uh, Human, also one of the leads in the this group. Um, so we we thought it would be useful for the community. So we started the skeleton doc with some ideas and then we presented that to, um, to sustainability group. And uh, that evolved also to uh, to having the sustainability group being active in that uh, in that initiative, and so we have now um, in in the in the in the issue you'll find the link to the paper, and that paper now includes uh, the current scribing that's going on amongst the group, and the notes I added to the meeting notes for this. So we had the the notes for the other meeting where we had the meeting to discuss this paper. You'll find. No, no, just go up to the uh, to the new business and then you're gonna find, yeah, sus yeah the sustainability AI notes, uh, which also will have what's happening in, in that meeting and the paper is referenced on the top as well, like what, what's going on. Um, sustainable AI and cloud native environment doc is, is where the activity is currently ongoing. And so, yeah, just wanted to update this group if anyone is interested um, uh, to collaborate, to, to start reviewing, maybe to give ideas and we can chat either in the working group artificial intelligence, or you can move over to tag environment sustainability. Um, depends on what you like more and where you want to discuss. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, this part actually kind of looks like, uh, Cloud Native AI white paper, right? So, okay. yeah, we so the idea is to add the personas of the AI white paper here to address the same problems, but from a sustainability standpoint, it's still evolving and it's still, um, yeah, there, there is a lot of ideation going on now. So, we're very early in the process if anyone is interested. All right, sounds good. So, that's the last one of the projects. So, I think we can move on to the new business.
Uh, so there's a demo of KRS. This is, sorry, who's KS? Hi, Karan. Hi, this is Karan. Hey, guys. Okay. Hey, Karan. Uh, so you wanna you wanna share something? Is there something yeah, some demo? I'll uh, so uh, I'll share some uh, like a small PPT and then I'll share a demo. Like, okay. Uh, yeah. Sounds good. Let me share. Oh, I, uh, Karen, uh, th th thanks for uh, doing this. Uh, just a minor heads up. Can can you try to keep it under fifteen minutes? All right, I'll I'll, I'll do this. Fifteen okay. minutes. We, we've thanks, learned thanks, from Mark. prior talks, we screwed that up by not saying that in advance. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, thanks thanks to Ronald because uh, through him I'm here. So thanks to him. Are you guys able to see my screen? Yes. Yeah, yeah we, we can see it. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, so we are uh, we are trying to build a solution uh, around the Kubernetes tools. So how how this uh, infra, uh, how this whole landscape is so confused and people are are not able to understand like what tools and services which is which is being uh, used or being developed or how it's going. So uh, I work at Cube Tools and uh, I'm also like into uh, I write content and work with the community. Um, work with many companies and uh, currently have expertise in MLOps and DevOps. So uh, the problem statement is like uh, uh, we have this report with the cast area where we see that a lot of provision, over provisioning and a lot of resources are getting wasted. And uh, uh, the solution around is, is uh, one part is how you can handle your resources in an effective way. The other thing is uh, there are constantly new tools are getting developed to uh, fix a specific uh, part of a Kubernetes ecosystem. So uh, people spend a lot of time in analyzing uh, which, which tools is good for them and which can optimize their whole infrastructure. Some people end up using the wrong tools. So all in all, it's, it's, it's like they're trying a hit and trial method and trying to get around with the tools which they actually want to uh, use and which makes sense for them. So all these activities, uh, and we also do some uh, community events uh, uh, back in India and even uh, right now in Toronto. So many people, many MLOps, DevOps engineers comes and they always have this uh, query that uh, last time we discussed about a tool and now you're bringing another tool, then we are getting confused. So how we use these uh, this ecosystem. So currently, uh, if we look at this ecosystem, we have like 30 plus categories and we have 400 plus tools and more are pouring in um, every day or like monthly. So this ecosystem is becoming big and big. So right now, uh, uh, the ma major part is how you understand the tooling and uh, later on it's how you can use it with the LLMs. So uh, existing tools we have, Copilot we have, we have Kubernetes GPT. So most of them are, are concentrated towards debugging and how you can monitor your clusters. But uh, there is a there is a problem that which is missing is like how you can provide a recommendation of whatever tools and services are running within your cluster. Like is it is, is, are you running the right tool or in the specific category, or you're trying to uh, uh, you're trying to understand what can be benefit, uh, what can be beneficial for you. So, uh, so here we are. So, we are giving a kind of a CLI right now. So basically, it will scan your Kubernetes cluster, and then it will detect whatever tools you are running. And after that, it will uh, uh, refer our database, and uh, it will generate the recommendation based on the ranking what we have developed in-house so with 30 plus categories and 400 plus tools we have developed a ranking for each and every category so suppose you have logging and tracing cluster management storage networking so uh, and then on top of it if you have the recommendation done then you can 
you can use that recommendation or if you further want to drill down in your cluster then you just take help of your uh, llms and the way that how kubernetes gpt interacts with the uh, your local ai models and your open ai then that functionality is also being provided in here so uh, most probably what we have done is we are just trying to get a pods information right now but later on we will also be in incorporating some small agents which will be focusing on application logs if the user is user want to fix some applications so basically trying to make it much more uh, multi agent uh, ecosystem but that is uh, later on so right now we support open ai in hugging face so open ai for uh, outside and lugging face is a local uh, models you can use it so we have basically these three commands which is uh, init scan recommend and help so scanning and recommending as it uh, itself speaks about it and the help is basically you're trying to uh, analyze a pod or trying to analyze some issues within your cluster and how you can uh, come up with a resolution using open uh, uh, using large language models so uh, uh, we this is a tested environment we have already put this uh, on our github repo so uh, we have uh, tested it with uh, all these environments and we are supporting open ai and uh, hugging face and uh, let me jump on to uh, are you able to see the screen yeah. Okay. So, uh, so right now we just cloned the repo and just installed all the packages. And uh, uh, if I if I just run this help, so it'll just list out the, all the C uh, functionalities what I have shown in the PPT. So we have health and we have recommend and scan. And there are other functionalities like pods and namespaces which kubectl uh, provides you. So we just incorporated and we'll keep on adding more to it. And uh, suppose, uh, so we have a workload running. So if I if I do a scan of my cluster, so it'll it'll keep uh, the scan. It'll give you it, it'll throw out the uh, tools what your cluster is using. So uh, in which category your tool comes in? What is the rank of your tool right now, as per our database? And uh, what is the CNCF status? So uh, Calico is showing unlisted because it's a, it's kind of a string matching, which is we are matching it with the CNCF uh, JSON file, a uh, YML file. So uh, we'll raise an issue. Anybody can work on that. So if we'll pre if we'll again go deep down to recommend. So this is the recommendation that is coming up. So in which category, suppose you have a tool in Grafana, which is talking about alert and monitoring, and you are using the best. So uh, it's a rank one, so it will tell you, and it is a listed one in a CNCF. Then if it comes to uh, uh, network policies, then you have another uh, tool called Celium, which is graduated from CNCF. And observer uh, observability, you have a uh, tool which is called chaos mesh which is incubating so if you can see a uh, cube watch it is unlisted in cncf so these are some of the options which we are giving to the user to understand the cluster and how they can further uh, come to uh, understanding what can be utilized what can be used in a very efficient way like how your tooling can be in a much more efficient and how you can use specific tools for your requirements. And uh, moving down to uh, and, uh, the other part of it, like how you can detect and fix the issue. So basically you'll get like two models when you run KRS Health. So uh, two options, one is open AI and hugging face. So if I select, uh, uh, if I select open AI then It'll, it will again initialize and it will start installing the libraries. So when we do a scan and when we do init in the starting where we initialize our CLI and our scan capabilities, we are not initializing the LLMs at that level. So when a user further wants to uh, interact with the cluster, then only we are installing all these libraries and all the dependencies at this stage. So 
Let me just. And, uh, I'll use the GPT 3.5. So as soon as you put in the model name, so you can get the namespaces what are currently available on your cluster. So I'll just go in one of the namespaces and uh, I'll just look in the pods. What are the pods that are available? So um, I'll just take up a controller manager and uh, I'll start scanning the pod for the system logs. So I got like two errors, uh, like the strings which comes in with the error that we have a specific uh, issues with uh, these, uh, with this box. So uh, is it valid or it is invalid? Then we have to say, okay, uh, let's uh, try to fix uh, issue number two. So it will, it will try to give a resolution based on your, like how you can fix it. So uh, whatever errors, whatever failure messages your system pods are is encountering, you can interact with your LLMs and you can start monitoring. And uh, when you end the chat, it just goes. And again, if you uh, do a KRS health, so it will ask you, so you don't want to continue this previous scan or you want to start again with a different. So this is uh, what uh, is in the demo. And if I just go back to my PPT. So we have previous meetups with this cube tools. We in Bangalore, uh, we have done 1.0 and 2.0. And currently we are coming up on August 14 in Toronto with uh, cube tools 1.0. So uh, we have listed up this uh, three hour event. And uh, here are, uh, we, uh, we have a community presence and uh, we have a GitHub repo where you guys can um, go and comment and raise and play around with this tool and let us know any feedbacks on this. Any questions? That was awesome. Thanks, Ron. Uh, I have a question. Um, yes, can sir. you explain uh, Cube Tools in relation to KRS, just from a company okay. slash project slash, just so we, for those who are new, kind of know what the relation is. So, uh, so uh, we have this. Uh, are you able to see the screen, right? Yes. So, so we have this uh, this idea of how. Uh, Cube Tools as a company is it's trying to build up a, a solution towards uh, Kubernetes and uh, uh, large language models and how it can further uh, uh, be effective in an area which many of the people find it difficult, whether it's a tooling or whether it's an issue in analysis, whether it's a deployment. So we are trying to come up with the different uh, approaches. So right now uh, we have open source this uh, first version. So uh, we want community to further give us the feedback. And we are also developing a multi-agent system where we are trying to understand how we can self-remediate and deploy and understand even the application level logs. So uh, multi-agents working together to achieve a specific uh, issue or a specific use case. So as a company, we developed this ranking and it is on the website and we have this different categories over here and we will constantly uh, trying to uh, update this uh, on a weekly and monthly basis. So the, the whole calibration is being how well the tool is and uh, uh, how much popularity and acceptability is there in the ecosystem for the specific tool in a specific category? How many people are using it? How many GitHub stars and how many uh, pull a PR requests and how many features and how many number of jobs are there? How many people are talking about it? So all these things we have uh, tried to build it and give it, give it as a ranking. So later on, we'll also try to calibrate according to the monthly performance of a tool. And uh, 
Later on, uh, we also try to benchmark two different tools within the same category and give users experience that what are the different functionality within a single uh, category, how it can be effectively used, the Kubernetes, Kube tools racking engine. That's, so, uh, that's awesome. Can, can, can you share your contact info in the chat so if people have questions, they could uh, ping you? Okay, so uh, let me share. So we have. So I have a quick question. Um, Ron, do you have anything else to ask? Uh, no, uh, no, that was awesome. Thank you. All right. Yeah, I think it's great. Thank you for sharing, Karen. Um, so I'm just wondering, um, how did you define which models you want to take for recommendation system on Kubernetes? Do you do any sort of, you know, validation or fine tuning to make sure, you know, like this model actually can work uh, for health checks and other, you know, uh, agent type tasks on Kube? So, so right now, if we, if we think about uh, fixing a Kubernetes issue, so uh, right now uh, we are just using uh, uh, models which are presently working, uh, are presently available. So we are not give, uh, we are not giving any fine-tuned model as of now. But if you are talking about a system where we are trying to build in our own fine-tuned model to make us uh, to use a specific for a specific issue or a specific task, and that process is on the way. So, uh, for example, if you want to understand an application written in Python, so how many exceptions can be there in a Python application? General exceptions I'm talking about, not a user specific. So how you can train a specific LLM, a small model, like a, like a small agent, not, not a big. So how you can fine tune it and how you can use that within this ecosystem to understand your applications. So uh, I think system logs are fine. It's like if you, if you are on cloud, I think it's a self-healing and uh, I don't, uh, I see the value, but uh, if you are a good uh, Kubernetes uh, administrator or a good uh, engineer, so if you, if you run it correctly, I think do you don't, you'll not run into any issues if you're, if you're on cloud because they are already super optimized. So the idea comes in whether, whether you're running on-prem clusters or you're trying to understand your applications more deeply. Because most of the experience, what I have seen uh, with the engineers is the applications are down. They're not able to scale up. There are some issues that comes in within the application level. So uh, that's my opinion. Maybe I'm <laughs> I just I just saying. That. Yeah. So that, that, I, uh, yeah. Go ahead. So, so I, 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 I want to give a chance because we have only 10 minutes. Uh, and there's another demo, I guess, uh, three. I don't know if uh, 10 minutes would be enough. Do you think it's uh, enough? Yeah, I can do a quick intro if there is something okay. that we have to know further. Yeah, and sorry sorry for hijacking, uh, but I want to give opportunity for others. And I think the questions can can be in the notes or the Slack. We can continue the discussion uh, ad hocly. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you for having me, guys. Thank you. Some, uh, thank you, folks. Let me quickly share my screen. And uh, uh, so I wanted to share about the uh, particular, I think it's engineers learning. Yeah, that's it. So I'm Sri. I'm a product manager at Intuit and also have uh, Derek who's joining me today. Uh, so I think during the last call, there was a one specific topic primarily around like how do we do uh, inference on uh, streaming data and some of the use cases, I think, uh, uh, Jani or someone actually spoke about it. So I thought of uh, bringing the open source tool that we have developed primarily for like stream processing at scale using Kubernetes. Uh, so a little bit of background about our team. Uh, we are the team that has open sourced Argo uh, from Intuit, uh, Argo workflows and all. So you have Derek who is actually a maintainer for Argo workflows. So uh, the problem statement actually came from through the Argo workflows community where if you want to run a workflows based on a streaming data, uh, that was not something that was possible back in the day. So how do we solve that particular pain point was the uh, genesis of the entire project that I'm gonna share about. Uh, it's called as Pneumoflow and we'll share some of the links and all of that. So quick uh, uh, problem statement and also trying to explain what Pneumoflow is. As basically Pneumoflow is uh, uh, 
Kubernetes uh, platform primarily for developing event-driven applications. And uh, one of the biggest pain points, like if you talk to either application developers or ML engineers as of today, if you talk to them, is if you want to connect to any kind of event sources like Kafka or Pulsar or like SQS, any of those, the biggest pain point that they have is like, you have to write a lot of boilerplate code and then also think about how, how do I auto scale my event consumers? So let's say for example, if you try to use your standard uh, HPA metrics in order to scale your event consumers, it's not going to work because uh, if, you are a, uh, if you're consuming events from Kafka and all of that, ideally you would want to scale based upon your uh, consumer lag and various other metrics that are most important for you in order to auto scale. So that's one part of the complexities that are generally involved. And the second is like writing the event consumers in itself. That's complex for an ML engineer or an application developer on a day-to-day -day basis. And the third thing is uh, there are also use cases around like stream processing. As of today, if you look at the entire stream processing or the real-time data analytics uh, landscape, it's primarily focused on the uh, like the tools like Apache Flink and all of those, but the learning curve to use some of those is quite high because uh, it's pretty much like Java, but if you're a Python developer or maybe a Go developer, if you want to do like map reduce kind of functionality, it's very hard for you. So like combining all of these different use cases where writing a lot of boilerplate code, thinking about auto scaling, and then trying to use your own favorite language to do either stream processing or even processing real time was like some of the constant pain points that we have been coming across uh, at uh, add into it. And that's how we started uh, building out the entire Nemo Flow platform. Uh, just to quickly talk about some of the use cases where we have seen it's being used uh, externally within the community or also within Intuit is primarily for streaming uh, analytics or like the streaming the stream processing use cases, real-time data analytics pro use cases. Uh, like sorry, both. sorry, Shuri, are you sharing? Yes. You cannot see my screen, sorry. I cannot see your screen. Oh, we were seeing the notes. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, I was able to see your screen because you can actually see more than one screen, right? So. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, let me share my screen again. Can yeah, you see? So, yeah, I see your screen and I see my screen. So you can see actually more than one screen at a time. But oh. Yeah, you have to put uh, at the top, there are two tabs. One called Ricardo's Arvana screen and oh, uh, sharing, Arvina right? and... Uh, Oh. Let me stop sharing mine so that that makes it makes good. <laughs> okay. I think I was speaking through it. Okay. So yeah, uh maybe going back, it's me, uh Sri and then Derek, who's part of the call also. A little bit about Nemoflow is what I've discussed uh primarily, like what is Nemoflow? Uh being Kubernetes native, you can use your own favorite language, uh, and we have uh, inbuilt source and syncs, like either connecting to Kafka or maybe like Pulsar, any, any kind of source and uh, syncs. And if you want to write your custom ones, it's pretty easy to do. And even we do auto scaling, not just based on your HPA metrics, but we actually do uh, like queue depth analysis and then consider metrics like uh, uh, it, uh, consumer lag and various other things in order to uh, uh, scale up. And we can actually scale back to zero as well. So that's one. And let me, uh, so these are some of the use cases that where we have been seeing like the usage of Nemoflow externally within the community and also internally. Uh, Real-time uh, stream processing, like, uh, and also the second is uh, inference on the streaming data. And the third is like event-driven applications. So uh, the most prominent one where we have been using Intuit is primarily for like uh, real-time inference on streaming data and also event-driven applications. Uh, let me quickly show you a demo so that you can understand what uh, like what Nemo flow is and all of that. Uh, so just to give you a quick overview, I'm going to pick up a very simple example of like, how do I do uh, inference on like, let's say sentiment analysis inference on a streaming data that is coming in. Like, how do I go about doing that is a simple use case that I want to pick and show. Uh, so how does a Pneumoflow pipeline look like is uh, first you would, it can, you just want to connect to any source. It could be a HTTP source. It could be a Kafka source. It can be any of the sources that you uh, want to use it for. And then uh, for where you want to listen the events from. And we have a lot of out-of-the-box ones. And the next is like doing the inference step. And it's altogether a new uh, individual vertex in itself. And then finally, if you want to write the results to, you can write to any sync that you like. Let's say you want to just uh, send it to a log sync or probably you want to send the data to maybe a Kafka. You can do any, uh, send the data to anyone. And each of these steps can be individually scaled. And we do it, we do it, the platform does the auto scaling from like 
the left to right uh, based upon the processing rate and the throughput that is coming from the upstream uh, from Kafka or any of the event streams. So I have a question. So do you do inference on on a model or is it, yeah. is it like an API and, and is it like a predictive type yeah. of model or what? I, it can be uh, each of these steps are an individual image in itself. So it's an individual container. You can package your own model, or if you want to uh, make an API call in that container, you can absolutely do whatever you want to. I'll show you a sample example of like how the piece of code for the inference looks like, and then you can see it. So uh, yeah, so, and this just an example. So let's go to the piece of code. And this is how the pipeline spec look like. It's a simple YAML file where you define your source, you can define your inference step, and this is where you can specify your image. And uh, you, it's the same, if you want to write your custom source, you can write it and then you can just give your uh, image name for that. Similarly, the sync as well. So you can, it's completely flexible, versatile. You can extend it the way you want to do. I'll show you some of the complex pipelines that we have it, uh, into it. And uh, looking at the piece of code specifically for incident, inference, it's, it's, all, it's as simple as this. Like, this is something that is uh, written by me. I'm like uh, very hands-on with Python. Uh, so I, all, all we are trying to do is you don't need to worry about where your source is, like Kafka or anything. You don't need to worry about any of those. As a platform, we deliver all of the events to your inference step or the, this particular vertex and uh, all of the vertices. So all you have to think about is like, look at your datum, uh, the data that is coming in. And then I'm doing a, I am just using a hugging face model, sentiment analysis one, and just make calling that model and doing the inference and then just passing on the data to the next step. So as a ML engineer or as a data scientist or anyone, uh, you don't need to really worry about like the event consumption or like all of those pieces, auto scaling, the operations aspect. Just focus on your piece of code where you just want to do that inference and not worry about any of the other uh, challenges of like uh, event streaming and all of that. And the platform takes care of uh, takes care of it for you. And let me show you a pipeline. Uh, I have like a couple of pipelines that I've created for this demo. Uh, I'll show you some of them. So for example, the we have been discussing about the sentiment analysis pipeline. Uh, so this is the sentiment analysis pipeline. Like uh, all of the UI and everything is available <clears throat> through the open source project. You can use it. Uh, so if you look at the spec, uh, this is like, yeah, it just me, let me take a step back. So this is your source uh, vertex. And for each of the sources, I'm just using a HTTP source for now for the demo. Uh, this is out of the box. You don't need to worry about it. If you want to use a Kafka source, I'll show you another example for that too. And the second step is the sentiment inference step, which which is where I'm doing all of my inference. Uh, for example, like I've created a sample image and I've published it to one of our uh, uh, onto uh, Docker, and then I'm just trying to use that image. And uh, it's a log sync. So basically I, I'm trying to just log the events so that I can just quickly see them here. But if you want to publish the events to any sync you, that you like, even to DB or anything, you can absolutely do that. So for example, I think there was one event that uh, probably Derek would have sent like a little while ago. It clearly shows you that, hey, that this is a good day. What is the sentiment of that? And I can show you another pipeline uh, as well. So this is around like one pipeline around uh, sentiment analysis. But this is another pipeline uh, which I've created for text summarization. But I wanted to see how different models actually perform, like how do they perform one against one another. So I've just created three uh, three different vertices forwarding the events from one HTTP source to all of these, and then trying to log all of those events onto the, my log sync. Uh, so these are the three models. Like I'm, I'm using the Bart model, and the second is the Pegasus model, and then there is another model called as LED. Uh, and uh, so, if I quickly show you, it's the same spec. Uh, I'm just using the same image, but uh, I'm just using a environment variable to uh, configure and load the model that I'm interested in for that vertex. Uh, similarly, you can uh, for this inference, uh, Pegasus, it's, it's the same. You can actually see, like I'm just using a uh, environment variable to load a different model. And uh, the platform takes care of like the events right from your HTTP source to like all of these. Uh, maybe I'll quickly send an event. Uh, it might take a little bit of time for inference because I'm just using a simple instance. Uh, let me, yeah, so I've uh, exposed my vertex on like, uh, this particular port on my local. 
So I'm just sending out uh, sample text around NLP just for the demo sake. Uh, I'll just send a few more. And if I go back to the UI, uh, you should within a few time you can start seeing this events are coming in. And uh, each of these uh, vertices will start processing all of those events. And then finally, I'm just logging what is the output of those into the uh, sync here. So let me see if uh, like if they have started uh, doing a bit of it. Yeah, so for example, like I send the event and I'm just logging those events so that for, for debugging reasons, it's much easier. And uh, it'll process that data and do the inference and then it'll send the data back into the uh, sync. And based on the throughput that is receiving, so initially we had three uh, pending events. Now we can see that it's completely zero. All of them have been processed. And each of these steps auto scale based on uh, the throughput that you are receiving. So I'll show you a different pipeline altogether where we are running at scale with an Intuit. And then you can see like the complex uh, DAGs that you can create and then uh, look at the pipe platform. So this is one of our uh, anomaly. Yep, uh, just a heads up. We, uh... We, at the, sorry, sorry, it's so short, but the, we can also do it in the next meeting as well to give you give you more time. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, uh, I'll just share the link of the GitHub project, and then you can, uh, if anyone is interested, feel free to reach out. Yeah, would be more than happy to talk. It looks yeah. very intuitive. I, I I like it. It looks sharp. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, uh, great great project. Looking forward to seeing the project become more popular and evolve. Do you yeah, have a contact that you prefer? Uh, can you drop that in the, the chat? Uh, uh, yeah, I can be reached out on the Intuit, sorry, uh, on the CNCF uh, channel itself. If anyone yeah, can. yeah okay. I think I found you on LinkedIn too, so if you... Yeah. And Intuit is the main sponsor of, of this, this work? Yeah. Yes, okay. uh, it's the team that has developed Argo. It's the same team like, uh, that is open sourcing the... Sure. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much for attending. Um, and we'll meet again in two weeks. And feel free to chat on Slack and WG dash artificial dash intelligence Slack channel. All right. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye.